Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Shipbreaker, where today I'm going to be tearing apart some more ships and talking about the uh, well, the journey to becoming a dad as I am experiencing it. Before I do that, let's have a look at the equipment. I have played the game a bit more, which allowed me to get some better equipment. I have a little bit less debt, although we're still at 984 million in the red, so it's going to take me a long ass time to actually pay that off. Now, with the equipment, um, I can at least repair some of the stuff that I have used so far. And uh, as for upgrades, well, I need to get to rank 6. And I'm currently not. I'm currently at rank 5, which means that, well, I have most of these things already upgraded. I think that what I need to do in order to get the next tier of this particular equipment to, to get to the next rank is to get a couple of thruster units delivered. Uh, yeah, I just need one more thruster class 1 delivered. Then I'll rank up to rank 6. So let's start with a shift and find a new ship. Now as uh, per the comments from last video, this is not the amount of days that you have to take apart a ship. It's the amount of days that the ship will be available. So I completely misinterpreted that. I'm going to take it easy on one of these ships. Uh, let's see, this seems to be the most valuable one. 5.8 million if you salvage the whole of it, which is not necessarily true. But let's see how far I can get. I'll claim that ship. And let's get to work. Slowly but steadily disassembling it. Now I have fuel at 100, thrusters are at 100. Let's see what I can tear off of this ship. Starting with the antenna. Because that's just low hanging fruit of sorts. And let's start cutting off these side panels. Easiest way to do that is just to use the, uh, what was it, the arc? No, the split saw, that's it. Salvage secured, credits deposited. All right, the antenna has been received. And there's one more here. Stop. All right. These I can now move over to uh, there. And there's three of these, which is immediately going to help with my work order. Because my work order requires that I bring in metal and nanocarbon. So this should speed that up. And this one. Valuable object process. Yeah, this is actually quite nice with the amount of metal that I'm getting from this stuff. Alright, that's one section. Let's do the other section as well. Now, in the meanwhile, what has been going on on the dad front? Uh, my wife is still about seven, eight weeks out. No, I think a little more. Uh, I have this counter on my tablet, and I started it when I knew that my wife was pregnant. It counts down to the due date. And it is, uh, on the one hand, it's very interesting to see that thing constantly go down. On the other hand, it's a bit scary, because you're going, oh crap, I have this little time left, I have this little time left, and now I have this little time left. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. But hey, it comes with the territory, uh, there is no going back, so we are par for the course. And uh, it's going to be, I think, according to my tablet, as I'm recording this, which is two days before it gets released, it is another 77 days, so it's going to be 75 days at the point where you get to uh, watch the video if you watch it on publishing date. Now, what else has been going on? Um, I've learned some stuff about myself that I need to work on. Last weekend we were at um, my niece and nephew's place, and, or rather, uh, it's technically the niece of my... or the cousin of my wife. Um, and... She has two kids who I get along with very well. Uh, one is a boy aged 11 and the other one is a girl aged 8, no 9 at this point. And uh, we were mucking about a little bit like we do. Uh, they are really keen on the whole tickle fights and, and wrestling and stuff like that. So that's what I do with them quite a bit. And I was uh, sort of fighting with the 9 year old and at some point uh, the other kid, the, the boy, he wanted to show me something on a calculator. You know, one of those things like uh, you can type words in one of these old calculators. The ones which have just, what is it? Uh, it's these, these older LCD displays where you have 
uh, how do you call that? I think lines or something like that. Just lines which indicate uh, what the number is. But if you put that upside down, you can also make words with that. And he wanted to show me something like that. But as it happened, the calculator was not his. It was actually his sister's, the nine-year-old. And she said, no, 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 I don't want you to, go to do that. I want you to give that back. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. So I said, yeah, sure you are. It's her calculator and she asked for it back. So you're going to give it back. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And of course, she didn't like that. So what happened was that a fight ensued, pushing and shoving and hitting. And that's when I split them up immediately because I didn't want that to escalate any further. And they accept that from me. It's not like they're going, who the fuck are you and why are you getting involved? Or at least it used to be that way. But that 11 year old is rapidly approaching puberty and all the struggles that come with it. So when I was trying to explain to him why um, I intervened and why he should just give it back because it was not his property and he pretty damn well knew that as well. And if somebody asks for their thing back, you just give it back. You don't hold on to it just because you want to try and make a point. Just because you want to try and get some attention by uh, showing something. Now, he's always been a hothead, but lately it has been going better. But uh, he just started fighting me as well. And I tried to talk to him, uh, tried to explain to him why I did what I did. But that was entirely unacceptable. And he stormed off to his room very, very angry and left me... Well, he left me angry as well, simply because he refused to listen and because I thought it was such childish behavior. And he stayed angry for a bit. Um, his dad went to check up on him. And uh, that's when the learning started for me. Because I thought, damn, um, why do I get angry over this? I'm... I shouldn't be getting that angry over something as stupid as that. That is really... I don't know, it doesn't make sense. But what's worse is that I can really hold a grudge. I don't know exactly when I learned that particular behavior, or at what point I did not learn how to forgive. But when somebody is labeled for me as the enemy, when I have some sort of conflict with them, like I did with this kid, it just sticks. And I go, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. It's just this unresolved conflict that I seemingly can't handle. And that's something that I realized all the more after uh, that incident on Saturday. And I talked it over with uh, my wife and said, hey, this is really something I want to work on because this is not how I want to be. And... I can be better, it's just something that I really need to work on. And especially since we're going to be uh, going on vacation with that family starting of August, I thought, this has to get fixed. For me, anyway. I have to get better at this, because that guy is turning into a teenager. And that means that he's only going to fight authority more and more and more. And I'm not the kind of person that goes, you have to respect my authority or else. No. I mean, he's going to act out, and I think that's perfectly normal and natural. But I need to learn to contain the stuff that goes on in me. And, uh, well, my wife works as a teacher at a high school, so she has plenty of experience with uh, managing emotions and managing anger levels and frustration and such. So she said, you know what, there is this thing that is called an escalation ladder. And that basically means, okay, if somebody does this, I'm going to respond in that way. If somebody does that, I'm going to respond in that way. And it's sort of a way to, to vent your anger before it becomes too much. I currently don't have that. For me, it's quite easy. I, I can take a lot. I'm very, very patient. And then all of a sudden I erupt. And I classify you as the enemy, and I go, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore, period. But for some people, that can come completely out of the blue. And uh, that's not the only thing I need to work on. I also need to work on the fact that I need to be able to, well, forgive people faster or 
uh, fix something like that before it becomes a longer term problem. And I'm glad that I'm learning that about me now, when I still, uh, of course, it's never too late. But now I still have time before my actual own kid arrives. Because sure enough, there will be situations when that happens and I go, okay, I'm getting really worked up. I need to cool off one way or another. And the, the way that I'm doing it right now is just not working. So that is some emotional homework that I have for myself. And again, I'm glad that I'm figuring that out now. And that I go, okay, I need to fix this. Otherwise, it's going to come back to be a problem potentially later. And that'd be a big waste. Now, on a more practical nature, uh, just today we received our stroller. And um, I'm not sure if I already mentioned that in a previous video, but we went looking for strollers uh, a few weeks ago. And my god, is that a huge business. Uh, there is a whole market for strollers. You can get them from very cheap to very, very expensive indeed. And fortunately, uh, we already did some homework looking at stuff online going, okay, that's the stuff that we do want. That's the stuff that we don't want. This is about our budget. And uh, this is how much we're willing to spend on a combination with uh, the stroller and the car seat. Because ideally, at least that's my version of ideally, I want to have a car seat that's also going to work with the stroller. So that if you're going on, let's say, smaller trips, you don't actually have to go with the whole stroller. You can just use part of it. And by doing that, you make it a bit easier on yourself because you don't have to be transporting as much. So we did our homework. Uh, we went to test out some of these things and the, the store that we went to has this whole... What do you call it? Uh, it's almost like a test lap where you can check out, okay, how does this thing respond to gravel? How do these wheels respond to uh, the sidewalk? How do these things, how do these wheels respond to, uh, well, there wasn't so much water in there, but you could test it out on all sorts of different terrains. And it was just really interesting to see what entirely was possible with these things, but also how expensive they got. Damn, you can pay a lot for these things. Uh, ours, fortunately, wasn't that expensive. And uh, we just got it right now. Uh, like, we received it today, so Tuesday. And it's really easy, these things. For me, I already turned it into gamification. Um, and my wife is just like that. We try to make things fun, also between each other. In the sense that we're going to try and uh, time who can... Uh, fold and or so so fold up and then re-expand the stroller the fastest uh, we're going to try and see who can put the car seat in fastest so we're gonna make this thing timed and then we'll probably make it even more challenging by also adding additional challenges like okay can you do this with uh, one hand behind your back can you do this with a blindfold and I know that's entirely um, it's entirely extraneous. You don't need to be able to do that. But for me, it's part of the fun. It's part of the fun to see, okay, um, if I can do this in adverse conditions, if I can do this when I'm being, uh, let's say when I'm getting close to exhaustion, and I will be at some point, if I can do that now and I can simulate those circumstances, I can, well, not quite turn it into muscle memory, but I can at least make it a lot easier on myself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have these time trials and see who can do what the fastest. Of course, I have a slight advantage at the moment because I don't have this whole belly that I need to be hauling around, which contains a kid, and my wife does. So I have a small advantage, so we might need to implement some sort of handicap system where <laughs> we try and even out the scores a bit more. Come on, container, get out of there. Lately, I've also been reading a bit more in that book that I mentioned in the previous episode. Um, what was it called again? Uh, the book you wish your parents had read. And about how to connect with your kid. And initially, I started reading, reading this when my wife was, I think, checking tests that uh, her students had made. 
and I read about, what was it, I think five pages, and then I said, oh, this is interesting, and we just had a, an hour-long talk about all sorts of things pertaining to children and relating to this particular subject. And there are many, many things that we think uh, similarly on, which makes it very easy. And I think we'll make a great team when it actually comes to getting this child. Because we... Oh, that airlock's still pressurized. Whoops. We still... We think about these things uh, in a very similar fashion. Not all of it, but most of it, which helps. And it can be very simple stuff. It can be very, very basic stuff. Also along the lines of... Okay, let's say that we have... Um, these just before dinner snacks like uh, chips or crisps or wherever you're from and whatever you call them. Um, back when I was younger, we used to have our own little tin, I think you call it. Um, our parents would fill that and we would just have a specific amount. And if that was empty, done. You're just done. You don't get any more. Whereas with that niece and nephew of mine, the nine-year-old and the twelve-year-old, or the yeah, the eleven-year-old, they always get to, um, they they get pretty much get to take as much as they want, up to the point where their parents go, okay, now you've had enough, and then they know that they can sort of overrule their parents, and they go, uh huh, uh, yeah, but I can always ask for more, and they get more, and that's the frustrating part for us. So we're going, yeah, we don't want that. We're going back to that old system where you just had this cup, uh, you get some nuts, you get some chips, and that's it. If you're done, you're done, and don't go begging for more. And it's things like these which I think can make it quite a bit easier. Anyway, um, back to the game for a bit. I have my quota complete. That's because I added that thruster in. I have now acquired the rank of Junior Apprentice. And that is going to allow me some further upgrades. And also classifies me for ship class 4. Now, I don't want to do ship class 4 just yet, because I'm not quite done with this one. But I might be able to spend some of my new LT on additional equipment. Let's see, the cutter is always nice to have. That is... Oh, that's just more range. And this is cooldown. Cooldown is good to have. The faster that cutter cools down the more comfortable it's going to be. Continue salvage. Now let's see, thruster feels good, oxygen's good, let's go. Because I still want to salvage the nacelles from this ship, and I have to salvage some more mechanical parts, and the power cell, which is somewhere on the crawl spaces of this ship. So first, let's try and get those thrusters disconnected. I'll make a cut like that, and like that, and one here. Uh, you are... Oh, you're just junk, you're just a door. You can get over there. Processing valuable object. Credits awarded. And one here. Another thing that I really like about how my wife and I are preparing for this whole thing is that we just talk things over at length. In the last week alone, we must have had, I think, three, at least one hour long conversations about all the emotions that are coming in with becoming a parent, uh, how we want to handle certain things, how we want to, uh, well, let's say what sort of human we want to build. And I know that sounds a bit curious, what sort of human you want to build, but I think those are the questions that you need to look into. What sort of parent do you want to be? What sort of human do you want to uh, create for this planet? And as I mentioned in last week's video as well, there will be mistakes. There will absolutely be things that don't go the way you want, or where you think, you know, uh, yeah, I should have handled that different. And I think that many parents are afraid to fuck up their children. And a comedian once uh, said in one of his shows, you know, um, you can only do so well with parenting, and you can pretty much only determine what issue your kids are going to be at the shrink for in 30 years. Because they will be there. Oh, shit. 
That was coolant. They will be there. But you can sort of steer at um, what part or what problem <laughs> they will be having. So you can still have a bit of impact in that way. Now, I hope, of course, that that's not going to be the thing. But whatever childhood you have, there will always be things that don't go your way, that um, you're not happy with. And I'm talking about as a child, not as a parent. I mean, as a parent, there will be probably more than one thing that don't quite go the way that you had hoped. Um, but the way that my wife and I are preparing for this, I think is really, really nice. Just communicating properly and saying, hey, this is something I struggle with. Whereas I imagine that there are plenty of couples who don't communicate properly and who run into this sort of stuff let's say mid child raising and of course there's things that i haven't thought of and of course there are things that i cannot even imagine might be a problem later on but that's fine because i'm confident that my wife and i will figure out a way to talk about it to figure it out and to move along as we see fit so as it stands right now i am very confident about our ability to work things out are there things that i don't know yet absolutely um, I don't believe that when it comes to raising a child, you, you can be 100% prepared. Sure, you can be prepared a bit, but as the saying goes, um, no plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. Now, I'm not saying that the kid is the enemy, but it's the saying that I frequently remind myself of saying, okay, look, you can prepare, you can prepare well, but there will always be situations that you have not accounted for. And that's all right, so long as you remain flexible and figure out a way to deal with said issues as they arise. And that, I think, is the more important skill to have. Just being flexible, being inventive, communicating with your partner and discussing, okay, hold on, this is not quite how I want this thing done. Um, how else could we fix this? What other way could we use to uh, fix this issue? How did your parents do that? Um, is that the way that we want to do this? As long as you can communicate properly, I think you have a massive advantage. Now back to the game. I am getting quite far with salvaging this ship. Just trying to get it apart as cleanly as possible. Let's make sure that this valve for fuel is shut off before I actually take off the fuel. I tried doing that in reverse, off screen, and let's just say that the fuel didn't take too kindly to that. The fuel may or may not have blown up in my face. All right, let's get this thing detached. There's another in the cell. Uh, no, that does not need to go there. That needs to go over here. And once that's out of the way, I can bring this one over there. Caution. Yeah, I still have 155 seconds of oxygen left. Now, what I'm still looking for is one more mechanical piece. So let's use the scanner and see what I can get. This is a med kit. That's a consumable... Ah, here. An airlock console. That's the last mechanical part that I need. So you, you're gonna come this way. And you're gonna go there. Done. All right, that's the work order done. Uh, this is thruster fuel. I still have plenty of thruster fuel. I still need to detach this part from the ship. See if I can get through here. There is still... Is that an energy cell? No, it's a coolant tank. So best not to use the laser on that. Let's just push this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, my oxygen is running out. Uh, this goes here. With all the heavy lifting that I'm doing, I'm running out of tether, so I'll probably have to stock up on those, seeing as I still have eight seconds... No, sorry, eight minutes left on my shift. Valuable objects processed. Credits awarded. Welcome to Megatron. 
oxygen and tethers. One other thing about children is that I never thought I'd have them. Back when I was in high school, I thought, you know what? Um, I'm going to join the Navy. And I was terrible with girls and women and whatever. Well, with people <laughs> in general. I was terrible with people in general. Uh, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to join the Navy. Uh, I'm going to be a career sailor. Or rather, a career officer is what I thought at that point. And I am going to uh, not have a family because I'd probably be away for quite a while anyway. It's really not going to work for me. And then... And that's the... That's the irony of it. As an officer in the Navy, you can sometimes be expected to go on these uh, embassy visits. If you're in a foreign port, you can... And of course, if they have an embassy, you can be expected to go to said embassy to do this sort of... Let's say exchange. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor thing where you get to go to that embassy and you have to be able to dance with the people there. And I am a terrible dancer. So back in high school, the school thought, you know what? We are going to have this big Christmas gala, not just uh, a disco as it normally was, but an actual dance. And I thought, you know what? Hold on, that's my perfect opportunity because then I can already do my homework of sorts. I can already learn how to dance before I even go to the officer school for the Navy. And uh, that was my that was my plan. That was the way that I had it set up. I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn how to dance there. And by doing that, I'll have an advantage over everybody else and make sure that I don't have to learn that while I am at the officer school. Now, of course, as you might already imagine, um, if you want to do dancing like that, uh, you can, but you need a dance partner. And a dance partner happens to be a female most of the time. So I thought, okay, fine. Um, it was... Uh, how should I put this? It was not a plan, like a way to hook up with girls, but it ended up getting me my first girlfriend. That's how I met her. And then, as it frequently goes, um, it turns out that we were not that well compatible. But one of her friends and I got along really, really well. And that turned into my girlfriend, now wife. And I'm currently 32 years of age. Uh, we've known each other since we were both 16. So we have known each other for half our life. And we've been together for... 2006, 14 years now. So we've been here a while. Hold on, this thing is probably too heavy. I need to cut this up into smaller bits. Anyway, uh, I never thought I'd have kids. And I, I remember when this uh, nephew was born. The one I've been talking about, the, the hothead. And... Of course, you have one of those those family circles, and oh, do you want to hold the kid? Uh, no, I fucking don't. But that was when I was 22, and I think that children and having children and stuff like that is the last thing on your mind at that age. At least it was for me. It was for me. So when we got into this circle, and uh, I had. It, well, it was my turn to to hold this kid. I thought, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it and immediately pass it on. It was this. I think somebody called it. Uh, let's play hot potato in the the comments. And that was pretty much what happened. Uh, I passed it on immediately, and and people had a laugh about it, and I felt terrible because I just had no idea how to interact with kids, nor was I interested in it. And here I am now. But it took me a good couple of years to just get used to the idea of children and to not take myself as seriously, to learn how to play, to learn how to be playful. All of this stuff I had to learn. And I think that I'm now at a decent point where I could be a decent dad, but I still have a lot to learn. I can tell you that much, I still have a lot to learn. 
Especially, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, about that whole, uh, let's say, emotional matureness of being able to forgive faster or being able to... Oh, there goes the panel. Um, being able to forgive faster, being able to uh, allow people to... Well, not so much allow people, but give people information saying, hey, I'm really not okay with this. Um, this is warning one, this is warning two, and if you keep this up, then we are going to have a fight. This is a bit of a waste of a large part of the hall. Should have taken that part away from the ship before that happened. Yeah, I just wasted 777 kilograms of nanocarbon. Oh well. I can still get this bit. Now, as I'm uh, getting to a close on this episode, what was your childhood like? I'm really curious. What sort of memories do you have of your parents? Uh, what did you wish that they had done different? What do you think are pitfalls of being a parent? I imagine that some of you might already be parents, judging by the comments on the last week's video. And some of you are uh, just probably teenagers or early 20s watching this video. Going, Jesus Christ! I don't want to have anything. <laughs> I want to have anything to do with that. Uh, that makes sense. But what did you wish your parents had done different? More space, less space, uh, interact more, have more fun, or be very playful, or have more serious conversations. Let me know, because I think that would be very interesting to learn. All right, Cutter, wrap it up. You got I got 60 seconds left. I can still clear up some of this stuff, although it's not really gonna get me a lot of money. Every little bit helps. I mean, I still have 980... What was it? 983 million in debt. This is going to go into the furnace. What else did we have here? Is that a bottle? Furnace. Mm. Another bottle. Come here. Lock on. Oxygen reserves are critical. Yeah, oxygen reserves are critical. I still have 45 seconds of oxygen left, but my shift ends in 10 seconds. So it's no problem at all. Dump it into the furnace. Whoa, you're not supposed to go that way. Done. 1.3 million, and the previous shift was in 1.7 million, so I was able to salvage quite a bit from this ship. Uh, half a million in nanocarbon panels, and of course the previous shift was a bit more valuable because at that point I also did uh, the reactor, which is worth half a million. Work order review, all done, and I can now move on to the next shift with only 982 million left to pay. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> after what? About 980 shifts, I'll be out of debt. Which, considering I'm making about 1 to 1.5 million per shift, that's 982 days. So that's about 3 years. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, and I'm getting daily fees, I'm getting interest. I'm getting 100,000 interest on my loan. Oh, that's not helpful. Anyway. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are on the whole uh, dad thing as I'm going through it. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comment section. And I will see you guys next week for more, uh, well, more ship breaking and probably more dad stuff as it develops. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you soon for the next one.